is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got for you the new Tamiya M10 tank destroyer. This is a mid-production model in 135th scale, and it does include three crewmen, as we can see, at least actually it includes three crewmen. I can't see all three of them here, but I'm pretty sure it does. Um, this is uh, kit number 35350 in their series. Uh, marked 3,800 yen as a suggested list price. Of course, the price probably will be considerably less than that. Uh, on the side here, they've got a 634th Tank Destroyer Battalion, 1st Infantry Division, Aachen, Germany, October 1944, as one of the marking options. And that's the only one. Here's the, the painted crewmen as they appear. So there's a loader, a commander, and a gunner. Let's go ahead and crack this open, but before I do that, um, I just read a comment on my channel, which I, I don't know, I guess I guess I should, you know, spe specifically be talking to the YouTube people that, who watch this, uh, watch my videos, uh, because someone basically said that another channel had gotten one of these kits and had already done a full build on it, which um, I was surprised to hear, considering um, I had thought we had kind of this souls internet-y website relationship thing with Tamiya and I wasn't aware anybody was getting preview kits uh, from Tamiya USA. But there is a new guy and uh, he's a, a store, a hobby store with, I don't know, 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's doing a good job on his YouTube channel. I don't, I don't mean to knock the guy at all, but I'm a little bit surprised because it's like, you know, magazines with their subscription and circulation, they get a lot of samples and and other journalistic online uh, things like um, like Armorama and, and other websites get samples. That's all understood. But when st when stores start getting samples, uh, and their objective is to just sell kits, it's it's a little weird. Um, it, it starts to get into that kind of quasi odd marketing scenario stuff. With, uh, one of the reasons I don't sell kits, people have been year for years have said, sell, start selling kits, start selling kits. And I've always said, well, no, I have advertisers and I, that would make them upset and so forth. So I don't want to sell kits. So that's always kept me in the journalistic mode of things where I don't feel like selling kits is a good thing if you're trying to then be journalistic about covering the hobby as, a, as an industry. So that's why I'm a little bit, I'm just a little bit perplexed why Tamiya USA would want to send kits to a hobby store, but not be sending them to other websites that are deserving of kits as well as us, you know, uh, that are covering, again, this is a more from a news and, and information standpoint. Um, but then it's YouTube, so I get it, you know, the guy has 10,000 subscribers, his videos get quite a few views, he does full builds of the kits. Uh, and this is Andy's hobby headquarters. I'm not gonna. I'll, I'll put his link down below. I'm not trying to like say this guy is not worthy of anything. And, and that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say it's a little bit odd for a hobby store to to be in this scenario. Mostly, what they're trying to do is drive sales, and 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 that's really what marketing and advertising is about. Of course, driving sales. It's just that it introduces kind of an odd component to it. I don't make any money by selling it to Mia M10 tanks. People who have web stores or hobby stores, local stores or, or online stores, make money from selling this kit. I don't make a dime from anybody who buys this kit. So there's a distinction between those two things. Um, and it's I think it's an important distinction. That's why usually there's a separation between you know people who sell stuff and people. And there are quite a few online stores on, on YouTube. I'm not, you know. Uh, it's it's definitely out there. There's quite a few. There's some, some UK stores that have hobby channels, and I'm not knocking them again for starting up a marketing arm of their of their store. I just I just find it. And anyways, getting back to the original point of this comment was, or this this interjection into the video was, is this, this person said, well, you don't need to do an unboxing of this kit because this guy's already done one. The Andy's um, hobby headquarters, and of course that made me think. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I don't just do this for my YouTube channel. This is going to go up on Armorama, <laughs> which is the number one armor scale modeling site on the internet, period. There is no other close competitor. Um, 150,000 to 200,000 unique people visit Armorama.com each month. I don't sometimes blow this horn 
enough because sometimes I feel like people take it for granted that somehow, you know, uh, that's not a thing. It is a thing. It's the reason what we got these. So I hope that that guy has a hell of a store and, and drives a lot of people into his store because I, I think I, I think in the long run, I'm doing a little more for Tamiya with putting this up on Armorama than I am for putting it up on YouTube. So, um, yeah, okay, well, that's, you know, soapbox stepping down now. Let's move on with the unboxing. Um, this one is going to be in the green styrene plastic. Let's go ahead and just count the sprues here. So we've got one sprue of the figures and some other components. We've got the upper hull. We've got the side turrets and a two-piece arrangement here. Uh, with more uh, lower, uh, I guess the lower hull is individual parts, not a single piece. We've got um, vinyl-like tracks, and I don't know what the actual chemical poly material is, and I don't really give a crap, to be honest. <laughs> uh, somebody called me out for that a while back. The uh, 50 caliber machine gun with uh, mount and so forth, which has probably been used on other kits. Some clear the sides of the lower hull and other uh, components there, some tools and so forth. And the suspension and wheels with some white uh, tow cable-like material. And those are two sprues there. And then a decal set uh, with decals of the star markings in white. And it looks like a couple of number options, or was that one number option? Um, this is one number option because it's the 13 tank is the, is the marking that we have on the box cover here. All right, so um, the instruction manual, obviously, let's quickly take a look at that before we open up the plastic. So we've got the, the standard uh, introduction uh, or kind of information about the tank that comes from Tamiya. They always do the secondary uh, bit here, which does include some, uh, I believe, color or marking options. That's in Japanese. Now let me just jump it here. Uh, well, I do like descriptions of the various parts. Grousers, vertical, vertical volute spring suspension. I didn't even know that's what it was called. Yes. All right. So I should study those things and then I would become an expert on tanks and I will make books and like Steve Zaloga. No, I will not because that's why we have Steve Zaloga. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, um, just seeing if there's anything on here that's notable. Nope, not really. So interesting that they just obviously decided to go with a, which to me it does a lot, but the the lower hull obviously in multiple pieces, and they do include uh, the the deck uh, compartment, crew compartment deck that, that the figures will actually stand on, I assume, which is nice. Uh, I'm curious to see how much interior detail they do actually provide with this kit. I have a feeling it's going to be fairly um, low, but we'll see. Um, tracks obviously uh, going together, the, the individual volute suspension system, uh, and then they're showing those going on to the lower hull, and they've got um, some upper, or the obviously pieces that will shield the uh, above the tracks that'll shield the interior compartments here of the upper hull. Lots of obviously little um, attachment points and hooks and things going on the tank, the spare tracks going on the tank, um, the internal uh, gun breech and so forth. We'll take a look at the gun, but I believe it's a one-piece barrel setup, which is nice. Probably rifled, I hope. And um, in some interior uh, detail here, like some additional ammunition, and then the, pretty much the tank going together, final pieces. Uh, crew and so forth. Uh, machine gun going on and paint some markings for this 1A and B model, or the B version is the 601st Tank Destroyer Battalion, 3rd Infantry Division, Southern France, August 1944. And that's actually one that has 31 on the back. Well, they really threw me there because I believe the first one is 13. Um, yeah, 1-3. Interesting. So the first one's 31, and the first one's 13, and the second one's 31. All right, well, that's interesting. All right, let's take a look at the plastic. I don't know why I'm talking in French, other than it was in 
France that the guy had the little where the second one was in. Oh, I don't need, I don't need scissors. It's to me. Uh, they just use staples, staples, staples. All right. So, um, white rope. Make sure I get everything in shot here. I, didn't, I noticed my some some of my stuff in the previous video was not all in shot. So. I will try to endeavor to do better. Um, all right, so this one, this screw with the suspension. The uh, road wheels uh, are kind of interesting in that they have these hollowed out sections for uh, reverse, uh, forward and reverse detail, assuming that I guess they could um, do both there much easier than uh, trying to do them all like slide molded parts or something. And, yeah, I mean, very good quality, typical with Tamiya. Not seeing a whole lot of issues. Some some of the caps here have the the release um, bit on them, which is very nice to see that added detail. And of course, there will be photos at the end of this review, so stay tuned for those. Um, yeah, tools. The side uh, lower hull pieces, some nice bolt detail there. Um, not, oh, the internal hatches have some nice detail too of the uh, reverse side. There's the top of the hatch. Um, again, there'll be photos there. I'm not sure how well this camera is going to focus. Focus camera. None of these cameras just want to focus on me. They just, you know, no, how no matter how much you spend on them, they never want to focus. And then this one has the two-piece upper hull, upper turret, um, interior detail. There are some ejector marks here that would seem like they would show up. I don't believe there's any internal bits that go over those, but I might be wrong. Uh, lower hull details, nice there on the back. And looks good. Go ahead and take a look at the upper hull now. Uh, nice vent work here. Very fine. I don't, yeah, with putting in some some dark spray, you know, overspray uh, initial primer layer there, you'd be fine. I think showing that uh, kind of with some depth. I was curious why they do these pieces, which obviously are hinged. You can see the hinges are right there, but they always do this as solid. Seems like that should be a piece. What if you wanted to actually show it missing or hinged or something? Uh, I'll go ahead and quickly look at the 50 cal. Yep, I think that's one we've seen before. But nice detail there. Not not fantastic, but nice. I have to admit, you know, looking at this kit, um, it's hard to get excited. I mean, I knew when this, you know, M10 was announced. It's an M10. Come on, it's there's not anything like you know comparing this to say the Panther release uh, from what about a year ago. That had some really kind of exciting detail and stuff on it. Um, these releases, you know, not that they, no criticism of of Tamiya. They're, they're just they're they're kind of you know less interesting let's say <laughs> uh, because the because the tank itself is just so it's just you know so much sheet metal thrown together to make to make a, a tank destroyer it's not it's not there's nothing really like standoutish about it these figures look nice though with um, some nice folds there and, and uh, detail faces also look very nice um, very uh, realistic little uh, submachine gun there Tommy gun and all right so the decals again we pretty much know what they're going to be on here but take a look there's some cutouts for the various uh, hull pieces that are uh, on the front of the hull um, yeah so it's 13 and then this one was 31 i guess Interesting, just irony there. Um, I'm gonna take a look at the manual again because I'm not. I uh, didn't really pay close attention to how much details on the inside 
of the turret, but there is uh, you know, quite a bit. They show some additional ammunition, some storage bins, storage bins, uh, a crank, I guess, to crank the turret, uh, which is included down on the lower end, I believe. Um, oh, is this a manual crank turret? That would have been interesting. They didn't have power, power rotating turret at that point. Or is that just a manual like fine tuner to like to aim the shot or something? Um, but yeah, nice, nice detail, decent figures. Let's go ahead and take a look at some look at the photos of the part, clo parts close up photos, and we will come back and conclude. Well, I hope you enjoyed the photos of the new Tamiya M10 tank destroyer mid-production. Uh, this kit is an early release, uh, probably out in Japan maybe at this point, but uh, it may be a month or two before it's uh, available in local hobby stores or even via U.S. or European uh, retailers online, unless they're uh, importing. So, uh, yeah, give it a little bit of a wait, and I'm sure this... Uh, will pop up and you can build yourself an M10 and certainly this is all new tooling and you know you can't uh, you, you as much as I you know said it's not exciting that's just a sub you know or, or a, a subjective thing that uh, it's just me you know some people obviously probably are excited about this kit so good for you and I'm glad uh, <laughs> I, I certainly um, don't think it's in any way you know a bad kit it's just it's just I don't know I just I have a hard time getting excited. I don't even play the Wolverine in, in the uh, M10 in the in the um, World of Tanks game. Maybe if I played it, I'd be more, I'd have more affinity for this tank. But uh, but again, yet another uh, tank that's being released that's in the game. Although it's not that odd that it's in the game, considering it is one of the primary U.S. tank destroyers in World War II. So, uh, but that's a good reason you know to build it and own it right there because it it does have a lot of history. So uh, it is definitely one. Uh, for the, uh, I mean, uh, this 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 is an iconic bit right here, which if 
you know, if you're into World War II uh, military history, but that, that's the piece that they stuck on the side of the, uh, the Panther to, uh, in the Battle of the Bulge to simulate it was that, that it was an M10, you know, to give people the, the wrong kind of silhouette identification and so forth. Not that they would confuse the rest of the tank because, you know, it doesn't even look anything like a Panther. But <clears throat> uh, anyways, that all said, <laughs> thanks for your patience and watching me ramble on and, and so forth and uh, leave any comments or suggestions you'd like. Uh, I promise I'll be nice uh, on this one because I know I tried some patiences, I'm sure, early on especially. Um, we appreciate, again, to me at USA sending us this advanced uh, copy, and I hope I didn't uh, ruffle any feathers over there by what I said earlier, but, uh, I, you know, if anything, I am bluntly honest, so I hope that's one of the reasons people watch my videos. And we will see you next time on Cracking the Box. Mm -hmm.